What's up guys, Chris here from Vogus Prospecting. If you're new to the channel, a big warm welcome. And if you're an old moldy hat like this one, welcome back to the season final of season one of Vogus Prospecting. Today we've got something awesome to show you. We're on a very productive spot that's netted me four and a half grams of gold in about 30 pans that I've collected over the last week. And today I've got two mix out on the creek to help me sluice some of this dirt to try and get a little bit more than one gram per session. About a month ago you may remember me holding some casting applications for an apprentice to come out with me and one of these mix is that apprentice. I got dozens of applications and I did want to say to everyone who did apply thank you very much. Um, I loved reading all of them and it was an incredibly difficult choice to actually pick the person that I wanted to come out with me. And I do feel that in the future there are going to be more opportunities like it. But that's not what today is about. Today is more about getting Mick used to me filming around him and getting right up in his grill with a GoPro uh, and collecting a lot of gold. So without further ado, let's take you to the creek. Let's introduce you to Mick. This is Mick number one. You know him, he's the golden uh, butler. Apparently he's bought lunch. I have. Hey. Big lunch, big lunch. <laughs> this is Mick the apprentice. So we've got lots of things to show you about Mick. This is his rig, this is his dog, and this is his gold. Well, actually that's his wife's gold. She got all the nuggets. This is Mick, and Mick has been an absolute champ coming out on the creek with me, because if you ever work with me, you'll discover that I do everything quite sporadically. I send people messages at the last second, and if they just sort of have to show up. <laughs> what we're getting you to do today, though, is something completely different. Uh, we're going to get Mick some gold. <laughs> we want to increase that take. So Mick's got well, what, I, what looks to be around a gram or two in that jar, which is not too bad, but that's been spread out over about two years. And this, we've actually been prospecting pretty reasonably for about the same length of time. But the main difference is I've had the opportunity to work with people who have been doing it for their whole lives. So I've learned a lot of knowledge and Mick just hasn't had that opportunity yet. And it puts us at a juxtaposition. That's a big word, isn't it? Um, on, on one side, it shows a knowledge base, and on the other side, we've got technical expertise. So Mick has sluices, he knows how to pan, he knows how to do all that sort of stuff, but he doesn't yet have that knowledge to get on a creek and actually find where the gold deposits are. And that's what we're going to be teaching him. We're going to actually start with a really complicated one today, which is to do with bedrock pockets. This is the creek section that we're working this morning. This creek has been incredibly productive to me. I've netted about four and a half grams in four panning sessions over about 30 pants, lots of numbers I know. Those numbers tell me that there is a lot of gold sitting in this spot and it's in the actual bedrock itself. It's not in a crevice per se, it's in what I call a pocket. So I want to explain to you guys what a pocket is, how to work them and why we're doing what we're doing today. This ground here is what we call shallow ground. Now shallow ground is where there's not too much rock sitting on top of the bedrock, maybe a foot, maybe a foot and a half's worth of dirt. And this dirt is very easy and quick to process and it's not gonna yield you too much gold. In my test panning, I've discovered that it will yield you between one and five specks per pan. Um, and because there isn't very much of that dirt, it's worth sluicing. We can quickly throw into buckets, quickly run it through a little river sluice and we'll collect that gold. If it was deeper, say a meter deep, I wouldn't worry about working it. I'd just throw it up on the banks and go for the bedrock. Once you reach the bedrock itself, you're probably looking at around 20 specks per pan from a good depression. This is what I mean by good depression. You can see we've got a nice sharp bit of bedrock going in this way, a nice sharp bit of bedrock coming this way. And in that crevice, there was some really good gold. Uh, but that's not the actual bottom believe it or not. The area that we're working now is full of fractures and cracks. These are caused by floods rolling big rocks down, uh, just the wear of water and the tensions that are kept in the rock itself. These fracture at multiple points, tons and tons of little hairline cracks that you can barely fit a playing card into, all the way up until maybe one or two inches wide. And these cracks never get touched because what happens on these soft bases, sandstone bases, mudstone bases, um, and other soft types of rock, is that they actually close up, they seal up almost like a wound healing, and they trap those gravels inside, and you get left with pockets of gravel. And these pockets of gravel aren't visible to the eye, so prospectors often don't know that they're there to work them. And hopefully by the end of the day, we'll have a decent gold take to show you, but nothing's guaranteed in the gold game. Although I've got Michael's lucky red socks now, so maybe.
Long Tom sluice system at the moment. A lot of people ask me, Chris, how do you know if you're not losing gold? Well, um, we're, we're going to show you that today. <laughs> what we've got here is the Croc Gators. This was their mid-sized unit. We've also got some V-riffle matting in here. Most of the gold should get caught on this. A little bit should get caught in that, and hopefully very little should end up on this mat here. But if it does, these cells should catch it. We've already got gold on the mat, first bucket unclassified, and I can hear the internet comment section screaming at me, Chris, why aren't you classifying these buckets? Well, for two reasons. Uh, first reason, very simple, you don't need to classify with the croc gold traps. They've got grizzly bars in the front to do that for you, and scraping rocks off the grizzly bars is far quicker than classifying into a bucket at this point. And the second thing is, classifying usually does help break down things like clays and whatnot. We will be doing that later once we get down to the very deep sections of bedrock. But we've got a redundancy sluice in the front of it, so the redundancy sluice should capture all the stuff that goes in through and out of that croc. Progress has been absolutely great. We've pushed through about four buckets worth of dirt so far, unclassified, really good. But Michael's just dropped a bombshell. He said that if we work really hard, we get two muffins each today. <laughs> to put you underwater and show you a little bit about what's going on all of this when we first started was covered in gravel now we've got several big bits of bedrock this one this one here and this one here are part of the same piece that have a crack running in underneath it here and a crack running in along here have a look underwater We're still formulating somewhat of a plan as we work, uh, and I thought I'd better explain it to all of you guys. What Michael's doing right now is cleaning up the leftover gravels that we've got sitting in a little bit of a bedrock depression here. Most of this has been cleaned off by a yabby pump. We've got a little bit more to do in here, and I'm cleaning this section up here. We're almost at the stage where we can start cracking this rock. Once these gravels are gone, we will know that there's no gravel left to fall in on top of what we're going to release, and all the, all the gravel that we collect thereafter will be the really, really good pay dirt. The best spot I'm betting is going to be in underneath this rock. If you have a look at the type of gravels and the amount of fracture bedrock in there there is so many places for gold to hide and it's on the inside bend and it's under an obstruction it's got everything going for it so that is a place i'm very keen to get into but first we've got to keep stripping a few buckets later michael's gone to get us all tea and coffee he's an absolute champion that's why we call him the golden butler he needs a t-shirt would it be a full gold t-shirt or just like the golden butler written on it i reckon golden butler written in gold golden butler written in gold yeah. white black shirt Oh, no. oh, with a fake boat, like a tuxedo print with the <laughs> golden butler. Yeah. Someone needs to make that happen. Michael's got tea ready, so we're going to clean out the sluices so we don't lose all the gold wire off having a delicious golden butler lunch. Something happened that Michael doesn't know about it. Me and Mick have somehow managed not to lose our, I'm not going to swear, our bleep. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this. We've got to surprise Michael, so we're going to do this quietly. You yeah. ready, Mick? You ready? Listen, listen. Shh, 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 shh. Ooh. Nugget! <laughs> Here. Oh. <laughs> That's a sweet little beauty. <laughs> I can't believe that. It was just sitting on the mat. Alright, let's go surprise Michael and then I'll come back and I'll clean I'll clean the sluices out. <laughs> Do I need to sit down? No. Okay. No, no. Go oh, on. 
Huh. Oh. No, see, there's <laughs> nothing in there. Well, there is now. <laughs> that came with mouth. Just then, last okay. bucket. Okay. Ah, was it one bucket? Yeah, it was just one bucket. Hang on. Listen to it. Oh, oh. oh that's gold. That's never going to get that's old. I honestly can't believe we pulled a nugget um, on the first time Mick was out because, you know, Mick deserves it. He's, he's a fantastic bloke. He's just, you know, he hasn't had all the luck in the world. There's a lot more to his story than I've told you. And um, I'm so glad that I could, could bring him to a spot that that happened. We are going to clean this sluice out now. Um, and find out if we've got any more nice bits of gold like that. I've cleaned both sluices out into separate buckets so we can actually do a little bit of testing and figure out what sluice is catching what and who's losing what and all the what's will be answered by doing that. But I'm going to do that after I have something to eat. So food, looking at the nugget, talking crap back more gold well we weighed it it weighs 0.25 what we're going to do is do the clean out see what we got for just the overburden stuff on top and then we're going to start cracking bedrock and that is the exciting part because that is where our gold's trapped everyone ready for four nuggets no answers yes. god i don't know <laughs> We've only got the faintest amount of mustard gold, probably about 10 or 15 nano dots. So not much at the top there. Yeah, tiny, tiny. Very tiny. So I don't care about them. We're going to send them back to the gold gods. They can, um, they can bugger off and grow bigger into nuggets. Croc time. Um, it's not as good as I thought it was going to be. It was only the overburden. We've got to talk about our uh, richness of things, which is the more buckets you push through a, a sluice or whatnot, uh, means that the dirt's less rich. So if you end up with a gram for 30 buckets, it may, and then you work another set of dirt and you get a gram for 10 buckets, the 10 bucket dirt is richer. Uh, I'm not expecting this to be overly rich, but what I haven't told the guys as I've been rambling on like this is that we've got another little nugget. <laughs> See him. So this is our non-rich dirt and we've pulled out two little nuggets. That is absolutely spectacular. We're two for two so far. Look at this. That's a good bit. Alright. We've got to get back to work. Oh, yeah. Yep, all right, sluice time, and we're going to break some bedrock open. And one of these lessons was about deviations of creeks. Creeks change direction primarily for one reason, and that is that they come in contact with something harder than they can erode. So bedrock will have different densities along its length of the creek, uh, and when it finds a spot that's softer than one other spot, it'll sink into the softer side. And that's what's happened here. The water has come from upstream, it's roared down this straight and hit this bit of bedrock. Now, the first place it hits is actually this bit of bedrock here. And it was a cool test that I did. Hey, Zach, you're helping me out, mate. You're a good boy. Um, there's a little bit of a test. Right where Zach's foot is, is the downstream side of this rock. And if you touch that rock, it's ultra rough. But if you come to the upstream side where the water first hits this rock, just here, it's ultra smooth. So we know water is hammering into this rock. When it hits this, it deviates off. Now water turns by boiling. So it's come along, hit this rock and started churning. And that's why we've got exposed bedrock. It churned all the gravel off this side of the creek and pushed it onto this side of the creek, the inside bend and downstream. Now, if we look downstream here, we can actually see something really interesting. It's hit this rock, it's boiled, sent all the dirt that way and just down there where Mick is yabby pumping currently, there is a really big boulder and that's what we're interested in because at that point, the creek deviates again, which means there was more turmoil there. And that turmoil is gonna give the gold an opportunity to drop out. And it's gonna drop out on top of bedrock that's full of cracks and crevices. So reading a creek or learning to read a creek and what's actually going on during floods is what is gonna get you the most gold because you'll be able to identify and cherry pick the best spot.
three men with yabby pumps walk into a creek. I really wanted to talk to you about legalities here as well. Um, legally, in Victoria, a uh, prospector is allowed to move one cubic meter of dirt per day. And generally speaking, I barely even move probably a tenth of that in a day just panning. Uh, so we're keeping a close eye on our bucket count today. We can actually do 100 10 litre buckets each before we become into illegal territory. And it's very important to observe these rules, especially with the uh, lockup that's going on in the Australian and Victorian bush at the moment, where we're getting locked out of our uh, state forests, our national parks by men in suits who have never set foot in the bush and that's not on. So when you are out and about doing this sort of stuff, try and stick to the rules because it benefits all of us in the long run. So one cubic meter of dirt per person per day. Last bucket of overburden, we are officially clear. There is nothing but bedrock left down here. And we've got Michael, the golden cracker, to get in there and get the bedrock open. This is a piece of shattered bedrock and if we look at it you can see that all sides were broken when I broke it off yet one side has a layer of clay and rock embedded in it and that's where your gold sits. These cracks are usually so fine that you can't fit a playing card in them and you will not be able to see them and given the fact that this was completely surrounded by other bits of bedrock you wouldn't even know it was there unless you got a cry pry bar in there and gave it a bit of a wiggle. We've smashed up a lot and I can feel a lot of gravel down the bottom there but we're not done yet we've got to break up all of this triangle rock here and watch that. Look at the run that we've got coming down there. There'd be a good 50 bits of gold just sitting there. Very fine, but very good take. Ooh. What I was talking about earlier with rich ground versus poor ground is exemplified by what we've got now. We've worked about the same amount of buckets, but those buckets haven't been as full. Currently we're sitting on buckets that are probably a quarter, maybe a half full. As before, we were working full buckets every single run. So far we've got exactly the same amount of gold sitting in that top mat as we did last run with the same amount of buckets but less overall dirt. So quality of ground over quantity every single day of the week. I'm running out of memory card and it's time for us to do a clean out of this sluice before we go and have lunch. So I'm going to make it really quick. We'll do a bit of a traditional clean out. You ready? One, two, three. And there we have it. We've probably run maybe oh, 40 to 50 litres of dirt maximum and we still got about as much gold as we got on the first run um fantastic we've got plenty more to move and we're going to roll that big boulder out of the way next and see what's hiding under that because i don't think that's been moved ever Well, we have done some mammoth work so far today. Even though we haven't moved a large quantity of dirt, breaking up the bedrock and processing the dirt at separate times is quite time consuming. Plus, Michael's been catering like an absolute champion. So we've been eating like kings. We've got one big job left to do now. Let me explain. We have smashed up and removed a lot of bedrock from this hole and we've stacked it up in a very neat wall over here. <laughs> uh, we've yabby pumped most of the dirt out of it uh, and we've probably pulled, I'm willing to bet about half to three quarters of a gram so far. But the main thing we wanna do is move this big rock two reasons for it it's a low pressure zone so we think that the rock itself will be accumulating gravels as time went by and second of all it's got a lot of fractured bedrock sitting underneath it and we know that that's where the gold is hiding we're going to try and get a big jimmy bar in behind it and just roll it down into the hole so first thing we've got to do is actually clear out any of the remaining gravel that's in the bottom of that hole because once that rock goes in it is not coming back out ever again this is like a nursery rhyme, it's called the three-way pump. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
after an extreme yabby pumping session between three blokes, we managed to get the bottom clean. We've run two three-quarter buckets down the sluice, uh, and we've got one nice little picker sitting on the mat just there. A whole heap of gold all over this. Uh, we saw a nice little round bit that was hiding down here somewhere. Let's see if I can get any buggy's head out. Ah, oh, he's gone. That's okay. He's gone in the way of all things into the boiler box. <laughs> We'll run the last couple of buckets, then we'll move that big rock. Give me enough leverage and I'll move the world. No one has touched the dirt sitting underneath this boulder in probably forever. It took a lot of effort to move. Um, and what we're doing is exactly the same thing that we did out here, which is taking off the overburden, throwing it into buckets, running that. Then once the bedrock is clean, we'll break up those crevices and run it through the sluice. And this is where we're hoping most of our gold's going to be. total of perhaps 10 buckets that aren't completely full down the sluices from underneath that rock we've smashed up the bedrock and it's about time i think to finish those two buckets off and run the dirt through the sluices it's really important and it's also a very hard thing to do about when to know to walk away from a spot spots finished you are not going to be able to dig the same gold for an entire day usually it's very rare you'll find a spot big enough to do that and you're better off putting your energy into trying to find another honey hole another spot that's going to produce really good gold than you are to just work the dirt around a hole that suddenly the spec counts drop right off from say you know 50 or 60 bits per pan down to five bits again why would you continue working that so learning when to walk away is really important and we have finished this section out so that's exactly what we're going to do Even if we have no gold in the little gold rat sluice and we have no gold in the boiler box of the crock, I'll tell you what, the buddings mat you buy for like seven bucks a metre is doing a fantastic job at catching gold. Look at how much alluvial gold have got sitting on that mat. And it goes to show you just how much gold you can pull from working very, very simply. All we were doing was yabby pumping off the bottom of the bedrock and working that stuff. That's where all the gold was. That's what we aimed to get. And we filled up that top mat. I can't even believe how much gold is sitting there right now. Right in. Beautiful. That's the one. Yep. Straight down into that bucket. Beautiful. Right now, here's the trick. We don't know yet. Michael, come. Come. Joy, come children. Crowd around. Well, have a look. Better include you guys, eh? <laughs> And there we have it. That is a decent take. That was all from underneath that rock. A nice big chunk of lead, four shotgun pallets, a couple of nice chunks. I'm willing to bet there'd be half a gram plus there. So now we've got to get it all cleaned up, dry, and weigh it. We were running the croc, what I call hot, which means a lot of water flow, very, very fast aggressive water flow and if it was in a normal sluice it'd blow a lot of gold out we've just cleaned out the dream mat sluice and we've picked up just that fine tail of gold there um and in my books that's acceptable losses with what we got it's yeah. going to be up to you about what you want to let go and to be honest we've probably what missing 30 or so nano mustard gold pieces and I don't think that is any kind of issue to lose from any sluice uh, when you consider that we're probably 
pulled close to, I reckon, a gram today. Season one has been all about mateship, and mateship is something very near and dear to pretty much all Australians. We are taught from a very young age to cherish our mates, not to get tall poppy syndrome, which is a complete other story in itself. And back in the 90s, I was taught as the internet came into our homes and schools to be very aware of stranger danger and never invite some stranger online to come out and hang out with you. And now I literally summon people from the internet to go and hang out with. And I wanted to talk about this as a tool. Mateship is uh, incredibly important to many, many people across the world. And you can call it anything you want from friendship uh, to a bromance or whatever it might be. But me and Mick both have the same thing, and that's PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder. And mateship is a very important and integral part to getting better, uh, to actually assisting in your recovery from this illness. Uh, and this goes the same for depression and anxiety and a whole lot of other mental illnesses and physical illnesses. These can be isolating. These illnesses stop people from going outside of their house. They stop people from socializing and engaging and this is where it becomes dangerous. Once you're isolated, it's very easy to get caught up in your own head, have bad ideas, and this is where things like suicide actually come from. Mick was talking to me in text message and he said that I was one of the few people he's been to, able to come out and meet in the last couple of years. And I'm honored to be able to give that to not just Mick, but people online. I get many emails, many private messages from people who have said that they've been inspired by me to go out and try prospecting to help themselves get better. And I wanted to let you know that that is a step in the right direction. You know, you don't have to always come out and meet someone on the creek to have a social life. If you're in a crippling point in your life with anxiety, depression, PTSD, anything else like that, and you're able to reach out and connect with someone online, that's the first step for you to make a meaningful relationship that will help you pull yourself out of those dark places. So to Mick, I want to say a massive thank you uh, for coming out today on the creek and actually giving it a crack. I know how daunting these sort of things can be when you're meeting up with someone, uh, especially that you've never met before, and to make that step I think is really important, not only for you, but for a lot of other people out there who might be thinking the same thing, who might be just on the verge of wanting to get out there and giving something a crack. I promise you there's a strong community that will look after you out there. All you've got to do is make that first attempt. The other thing I wanted to say was that mateship goes both ways. Whilst it's important for the person person who is ill to go and seek help and seek that refuge of mateship and, and friendship and family, it's also just as important for people who are in their right state of mind, who are well uh, enough to reach out to the people who they know might be struggling, and not just ask how they are, because it's easy to brush off, how are you, you'll just say, I'm fine, but to also ask them what they're up to, what they're doing, what they want to achieve in life. Start a conversation, open some doors for them to actually let those emotions out. Let them know that you are actually there and you're not going to judge them for talking. They're the hardest things to, I feel, uh, really get across to people is that it goes both ways and if you're in a position to give someone else help, give them that help. This is the gold we got for the day. We've got an Australian 20 cent coin in there for a little bit of scale and the two beautiful nuggets. This weighs in and around 0.04, so it's a nice big flat bit of gold. It's not so much a, uh, a nugget. It's it's more of just a beautiful uh, specimen piece. And it's really interesting to note, if I can get this thing to focus on my finger, there we go. One side is river worn, that is the river worn side, and one side is still extremely reefy. Now what that means is this at some point was sitting on a bit of quartz on this side and it was tumbling down the creek and smashing all the gold up on this. That's why we've got nice smooth gold on this side. And at some point it's popped off that bit of quartz and we've got the reef gold on that side. So it's a beautiful little specimen to get. But the piece of resistance is the quarter gram bit of gold that we've got there. I was not expecting to find a nugget, but I did tell everyone that when Michael wears his red socks, we find nuggets. I tell you what, if you're not part of my Facebook page, you need to be because we do live panning sessions and everything, and you'll get a lot more information about Michael's red socks from it. <laughs> but this, this nugget is unbelievable. Just listen to it. Oh, wait, wait, everyone, shh, shh, shh. Whoa, whoa. One more, one more for prosperity. Oh, on the coin. That was a nice little ding. So that's the gold. We're going to we're gonna dry it up um, and then I'll weigh it here. And what we'll do is we'll put a little thing probably about here of how much it actually weighs. This is a weird goodbye because we're going to be back next week with the start of season two and we're all hunching in. We're very excited. 
I want to say a massive thank you for everyone who's watched my videos, shared them, and got involved in my channel, especially on this last episode. It was great to pull out a couple of nuggets with a couple of beautiful nuggets themselves out here on the <laughs> creek. What we're actually going to do is weigh up the gold at the end of the day, and I do feel that what we should be doing is giving Mick all the gold here because uh -huh. I reckon yep. I reckon he deserves it to be honest he's he's done the hard yards and now it's time to start getting a reward so yep. Mick's gonna take home all the gold he's gonna drop that nugget and a pan just to annoy his wife all day long because she's a <laughs> and detectorist all night. <laughs> and all night <laughs> thank you very much for watching I hope you enjoyed this video remember to hit that like share and subscribe button if you would that helps me grow the channel bigger and better for you guys peace and we're out Wump. Michael wants to let you know as well that he's got a special on red socks. They go for a hundred dollars a pair, but they'll guarantee you that they're going to get nuggets every single time he's worn his red socks. We have found Absolutely. nuggets. <laughs>